It did. It did? Yeah, I had this dry, hacky cough, like, <laughs> I kept coughing and coughing. And then David said, oh, well, May would say that your chi wasn't balanced. <laughs> and so I said, well, I think I'll do that balance. And then it went away. <laughs> well, I, I still have a little bit of that cough. I do. <laughs> right. Yeah. So you have to be able to Right. So this is a page where if you do that standing, close your eye for one minute on both legs, yeah. and then manipulate this pericardium. You either can do this one or tap. Okay? And then these two, you want to um, try to feel these. Let's see, one, two, three, four. The kidney. The, lip, the kidney has is kind of a loop, right? The kidney is a little kind of loop. And the liver is up. The liver is up here. Yeah. The liver is up here and here, and then this is yeah. where you can feel it. Okay. Yeah. So whenever you want to know whether that's the chi point, is how sensitive that point is. Okay. So you can see from the picture. That's why I gave each a picture. Oh, kidney is kind of has kind of a strange loop. Go up, go back, go back. Only the kidney has it. Okay. So manipulate those two points, and then. Manipulate these two liver points and then feel it until you find it. You can feel it. Can you feel it? Yeah, that's it. Okay, so if you manipulate those four points uh, every day, both sides, that will help your sugar level according to the Chinese. No. So it loops, so you go left, both your right foot and your left foot. So casual here. So I like it. So you, see, you can all try if you want to. You can definitely feel. Can you feel it? Hurts. Yes, and where it doesn't hurt. Right, right. The place that is sensitive, that's the chi point. So if you put your hand on the area that doesn't have chi point, you don't have to see that. So then what? Huh? So you found the place that the massage. massage until the pain goes away. You probably never will have the pain go away okay. because it will always be sensitive. Mm -hmm. But by, by knowing that when you press, I, I just want you to um, experience how it feels. Mm -hmm. Okay. So so any point, these two points when you massage it, <coughs> manipulate it, is where you, you get the flow. Okay. Uh, for a more advanced class, I even show magnet using magnet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I didn't bring it, you know. Right, because magnet, another thing is, remember those chi point has liquid minerals? They discovered through their research that your highway, you know, your 40 meridian is your major highway. There are small roads, but we only deal with the major highways. And then each point, I call it way stations. And way stations each have liquid mineral <coughs> they found. So that means if you if you vibrate it goes bzz, 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 bzz. it's just like crystal vibration because it's mineral. It's liquid mineral, right? So this Alex Wu was real clever. So he put these little magnet and put it in the chi point and put a little band-aid, you know, yeah. I tried it. But it's a little bit kind of a bothersome sometimes you gotta pull a bath. You know, take a shower. So it yeah, fell on. Uh, but yes, it's okay. But you, you cannot put it. If you to, put two chi point in the same meridian, you neutralize it. No, you oh. have to just be one yeah. for for the whole meridian. Yeah. Left and right. Okay. So I didn't do it this time, but that's another way to do it for people who are lazy to manipulate. You know, mm -hmm. but. Um, the oil, I usually put the oil, so if you manipulate, and if our hands get tired, you use the spoon. Mm -hmm. and at the end, the end of the spoon. Mm -hmm. And you just, because if you rub it, you can really feel the sensitivity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. So this sheet is one way 
Dula the pericardium, Dula standing up, and the leg. That's one series of health prevention. Okay? We kind of talked about it last time, right? Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, we did. Yes. Yes. You gave us the sheets. And this one, this one we didn't have is because this is to show that while you started to do this, you're going to have, especially some, I have this because I was kind of get carried away. You know, I was having my, I was having my liver, every single morning I was happy. And guess what? These are the kind of symptoms that can happen to you when you're doing this real, you know, manipulating. Yeah. Because your body, this sounds terrible, isn't it? Headaches, flu-like symptoms, puffiness of face, heart Rash. complication, rashes, Rash. constant urination, Hong Kong foot. <laughs> What's that? That's athlete's foot. Athlete's foot. Athlete's foot. Athlete's foot. Athlete's foot. Oh, I like that. Home, home foot. Oh, I have home home okay, foot. Okay, this charge of amino protein I do when I do my flushing of the tea. I smell my urine, kind of an iron smell. You're weird. <laughs> I use it on my skin. Yeah. So lower back pain, unexpected pain, sore throat, short-term insomnia. Okay. It's not that you're gonna all have this, but what he what he's saying that some of these symptoms is because you're flushing out toxins. It's normal. Right. It's it's normal. Yeah. And I have experienced maybe eighty percent of this. Wow. And how long does it last? Um, it lasts for me because I really damaged myself over the last few months. Yeah. But. You know, not that I, I'm also under doctor's care too, but it's yeah. like I started to understand what's going on, right? Yeah. And um, a lot of people will have, like for instance, didn't you like when you? Yeah, I started started coughing and I couldn't stop. Yes. It was like um, and the the mucus in my nose was running down, you know, yeah. in the back of my throat. This is yeah. he's yeah. stimulating. Yeah. So everybody would be different. Yeah. You, you have to kind of journal yourself. For yeah. me, is when I was tapping, tapping, and I got rashes like this. Yeah. I was scared, yeah. but it turns out to be some of the toxin of the antibiotic. Tapping rash. Tapping rash. Yes. Yeah. Tapping rash. Yes. Okay. Do you remember the mucus was healing diet? Arnold Barrett. I forgot. Oh, okay. What do you think about the mucus? The yeah, mucus is definitely is the backup. Mm -hmm. Now, do we have to get rid of it? Yes, I think. Mm -hmm. um, another thing to do, which I told you is kind of gross, is to take two oh, uh, Kleenex. Kleenex and roll it up real thin because it's mm -hmm. still soft. Mm -hmm. And then you take it in there and you kind of twist it. Yeah. You know? I thought, oh my gosh, you sneeze, sneeze, sneeze. Mm -hmm. And that's another remedy that some Chinese doctor mm -hmm. recommend is to uh, you know, induce those right. coughing out. Yeah. Get, it out of the get rid of the, the mucus, mucus and give it But you don't need the, to wet the tissue, no. just... The I tried it, it works. Okay. But I didn't want to demonstrate it's kind of cool. No, 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 no. no. It's okay. Thank you for not demonstrating. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I was afraid to do it. And I was, you know, they recommend that to me. So it says with this tissue, and so one day in the bathroom, I decided to give it a try. Yeah. And it worked. It worked. Yeah. But then I sneeze, That's I the put best my Kleenex. Place. Best, best, time, best time to do that. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> but it's another thing, that sneezing and uh, farting is good to get rid of that stale air in your body. Right. And then mm -hmm. the, the sneezing is the, the chill toxin. Remember the chill toxin we talked about? I don't think my boyfriend's <laughs> Remember in the uh, in that part about uh, your system, when your chi blood is not strong, like you've been borrowing, deficit spending, mm -hmm. and so then your body doesn't eliminate well. Okay, so when you get chill, then normally the the blood rush up there to change the chemical consistency, so you get warm, you know. And okay, so now you're done chilled, and you just sneeze it, you know, and then you're okay, right? But 
as you grow older or your body is not in good chi blood, mm -hmm. it doesn't sneeze out. Mm -hmm. So then it stays in the body. And a lot of times it stays in the back. So I've done some, you know, some tapping massage for people. Very thin people, but it's like they have a push, like like a cushion or like a mattress padding from the back of their lateral mm -hmm. meridian. I was surprised because the book said, so I was really surprised I was doing that. That's the chill toxin. This mm -hmm. thing. No, just to become solid. And then here too. Mm -hmm. So some people have, mm -hmm. because they chill in the, in the bladder meridian. Mm -hmm. so, 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 so a lot of it you have to do massage. <coughs> I would recommend massaging. To, that's because your body now is in the yin yin deficiency. Mm -hmm. Yin qi. Yin qi. So that's the concept of Chinese traditional medicine, that as long as you understand why some of these things are happening to you when you're older. I don't know where you go first, Minneapolis or China. Well, China Understanding. But, uh, but, that, but actually, once we understand the issue, then we know what to do with it, see? We all, we're all going to get old, so. But <laughs> me, not, not me. Not me. <laughs> No. Okay, so re recap. Any more question on this section? No. Huh? No. Okay. Ooh. Everybody's kind of so mellow. <laughs> 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 it's kind of a different kind of everything. Oh. Okay. Oh. The food. Okay. The food is <laughs> okay. Shall we go to? Are we remember last time? Uh, Diane. Mm -hmm. Shall we now go into more of this? Sure. Okay. You have this now? No, I no, no, no. no. Oh, thank you. So the the way we oh, eat thank you. digestive system is very important uh, when you roll. And then by eating right, your frequency of your inside vibration is right. Then we have toning, it's another frequency. Then after toning, we want wow environments to have the right frequency. So that's that's this piece. Last time you didn't have this piece, right? Right. Okay, no, we didn't. Right. Okay. Yeah, and then the we were a little, star, the, right. the feng shui according to time. Uh, I'm not going to go into feng shui according to, to space because most people would, you know, I'm going to go right into feng shui according to time. Mm -hmm. um, last time I think we said that in the 80s, late 80s, some pre previous to the 80s, Feng shui is always feng shui according to space. Okay, you, in fact, all the American interior design is according to space. That you, you know, you got to have your bed put a certain way, and your mirror, and to make you feel good. Okay, so that's feng shui according to space. But it is important according to space. And but according to time, it is that it also means according to the nine flying star. Uh huh. Nine different flying vortex of energy coming to the earth, and every year it changes. So, um, the book, in fact, tomorrow we have an author, his name is Joseph Dispenza. Dispenza. In his book, he was very sick because they find out that his house was next to a radio station tower, and then they add more voltage to that tower. So the frequency vibration is affecting him next to it. So I thought, oh, that's interesting. That's feng shui according to space. Like your house shouldn't be next to a radio station, station or, 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 or like just even uh, a church or a hospital. Because the energy from that is too strong for you. So from you a house. church is too strong? Mm -hmm. Why? Why? Mm -hmm. I think it's the people, the the vibration of it, you, you don't want to have, unless you, okay, everybody's different. The same person can live in that house, it's perfectly okay, and another person go in there, 
and it's not good enough for you. For instance, um, so <coughs> if they, if they, if you are in a place where like there's three different traffic go through your house, that's not good because it's too much energy going in. Mm -hmm. But if you are a butcher, you have a knife, you're okay. You're cutting up pork. That corner is good. It's okay for you. Do you see what I mean? It's not like everybody is bad for you. It could be one family moving, they're perfectly okay. Another family moving, it's not good. That has to do with the owner's vibration frequency. Okay. And then, now, I don't know, according to my feng shui master, is that when the tower is so, so strong, and maybe, I have to ask him tomorrow, that maybe his room happened to be number five energy this year. Like, he could be perfectly okay in that tower of frequency next to him. But where he sleep, that year's energy happened to be hitting five yellow. And then with the frequency of the tower together, he probably can get sick. Do you see how this, do you see what I'm saying? But yeah. in the same way, if it was one of the good spaces, he could have, Maybe like, good dreams. Good dreams, right? Good dream, right? Yeah. But the fact that he's next to this tower is not good anyway. Okay. You know what? Like for instance, sometimes you're not supposed to be in a house where some other building's corner like this pointed to you, mm. right? Oh. Yeah. And you could be perfectly okay, then on the seventh year, you're in this direction. Whoa, you are in bad direction and I'm to you. Mm -hmm. So that is the trick. Do you see where I'm coming from? Uh -huh. May, yeah. I, I told you I have a relative who's Chinese, yeah. and she won't go any place where she doesn't have southern exposure. Right, south, yes. We I always never understood that. Because the sun coming south, and the feeling of south, the lighting is a good, any good feng shui position is north, east, southwest, right? Okay. North, east, okay. no, north, south. Oh, okay. we, we always do north-south this way, mm, okay. okay, west, east, or maybe American will be east, mm -hmm. right? And then northwest, this way, right? Uh -huh. This way, right? Right. Okay. Any position where your house is behind here, facing this, house behind here, facing that, so that could be like 16th direction, right? Your house facing this way, or your house facing this way, mm -hmm. or your house facing this way, your house facing this way. Your house facing this way, say. so 16 direction mm -hmm. is good from sir. Mm -hmm. Is this kind of direction kind of not quite the 16 is where you're going to have trouble. So your compass is like, I am sitting, they call it um, sitting southwest facing northeast, right? Yeah, this way. Good from sir. Sitting my back to northeast to southwest, good from sorry. Sitting west, going east, or east, west, but it's always when you get into kind of a not quite right is where you get into trouble, okay? That's just one theory of feng shui. But if you basically, like my house, <laughs> north facing south, okay? That's good, that's good. Or I said south facing north, that's good, that's good. And then also, your right hand side is the white tiger side. Your left hand side is the green dragon side. So if you have sitting back is your north facing south, then let's say my house is kind of like this. Then my uh, west is my white tiger side. Left dragon is my east side. And you want, uh, for, for male, you want to promote the white drag, the white tiger, female, the green dragon. Okay? So those are all, um, like when I was in China, when it has the best feng shui is north facing mountain, south facing water, and your left and right side are like a little, like a little sitting Buddha kind of a shape, usually good feng shui. So that's just the, and now I'm going to feng shui economy space a little bit, like environment a little bit. Usually, good feng shui is where there's plenty, there's water, and there is uh, um, 
mountain and there is trees. Usually that combination. It's always good feng shui. This is a very good feng shui place. You can feel it. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the breeze. Great energy. Great energy. Okay. So, uh, so once you understand, plus another I Ching is that Northwest, okay? If you want to promote the head of the household or the men, you always promote Northwest. Mm. If you want to promote mother, Southwest. Mm -hmm. If you want to promote first daughter, Southeast. You'll promote son, East. What, what do you mean promote? It means uh, the corner of each section in the house within that uh, if you put things, like for instance, you want the head of the house, a man, to have a lot of money, put a money box there to promote, manifest intent for the man to make money. That's what, what he meant. Okay? Uh, I'll give you a little story. Like Northwest, my feng shui master, all the wealthy, 80% of the billionaire is, is fine. He said, after 20 years working with these feng shui people, I work with his client, he kind of have a theme, is that unconsciously, everybody who become billionaire, they put a safe in the northwest side. He said, it's just after he's seen so many people. And also, northwest in the I Ching promote, according to the uh, traditional knowledge, is promote the head. You want that power, sit in the northwest side of the, of the building. Okay. Is, that the take, uh, is that the same for females if you want to make money? Female southwest. So, but for me, I do both because I'm the head, I'm also the female. So I do both. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, so I cover every base. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, so he said that he would, you know, these rich people will ask him, this is his experience, you know, I'm just telling you his experience. He will go to the so he'll he'll go. Where's your safe? Because after he, this is his experience, mm -hmm. okay. So in Hong Kong, and then he said invariably they would open up and they they will see the safe in the northwest side because they subconsciously they have no idea.